This first one you see here is called Grant Hall with a large clock tower. When that building was built, the dean of the time really admired that clock. And he made a rule that no other building on campus could be taller than the clock tower. He really wanted it to stand out. So you'll notice everything built in this area is shorter, if not level, to that clock. The next one on the right is one of my favorite buildings here. It's called Ontario Hall. It's a very popular spot for graduation photos and a lot of wedding photography comes here as well on that grand staircase. And the last one on the right here is the Douglas Engineering Library. So like I said, engineering is the most popular program. In this library needed more space at one time. So because they couldn't build up due to the rule, there was no space to build around. So they actually dug three levels underground. So as you can see, this is a, a very pretty university, a lot of really beautiful buildings. It's a really nice area here. If you can just imagine this area being completely different back in the 1800s. This area of Africa is called Stewart. There was a man named Mr. Stewart who was one of the United Empire Loyalists that came here from the United States. He was granted 200 acres of free land in this area. And he started to see all of these immigrants that were coming in on the coffin ships that had nowhere to go, nowhere to live, no money. And he thought it would be a good idea to build a lot of low-income homes in this area. So he built a bunch of uh, wood structures, which were very unsafe back then, due to all the fires uh, in this area. So it attracted a lot of the lower-class citizens to this area, a lot of those poor immigrants. This area became very populated. A lot of taverns popped up, which uh, brought a lot of prostitution to the area. There was pig farms surrounding these buildings that were not kept, so it was very stinky, dirty. Uh, the waste disposal system was not good, as well as uh, the sewage. So it was just a really disgusting place to be. But funny enough, Mr. Stewart lived in this house right here from the old beautiful mansion in the midst of all this chaos happening in Alberta. That's called Summer Hill, that's part of Queen's University. When uh, Princess Diana and Prince Charles came here in the 1990s, that's actually where they stayed. Uh, now straight ahead of us and to our right, down Stewart Street here, is Kingston General Hospital. So this is the front part of the hospital that we passed by earlier. KGH was established in 1835, and it was designated a National Historic Site here in Canada for two different reasons. Uh, the first reason being it is the oldest hospital in the country, and also because it was technically our first House of Parliament. So prior to City Hall being completed in 1844, Kingston was the capital for three years. So they would use the original building at KGH as a boardroom, and that's where they started to write the Constitution of Canada. So that's designated the first house of parliament. Uh, now we're back to City Park here on our right hand side. Speaking of parliament, back when Kingston was the capital, Queen Victoria sectioned off this part of land in hopes to build parliament held here. So this is where she wanted to build all the parliament lines. But because we never a state capital which just remained vacant for many years and eventually turned into the city park. It's actually our first designated city park here in Kingston. It's a popular place in the summer as well for the Now we're pulling in front of the Frontenac County Courthouse here. This was built in 1848. With Kingston being the prison city, if any inmate was sentenced to the death penalty, this is where they were sent to be hung. So behind this beautiful courthouse is a, a paved parking lot right now, but back then was a two-story limestone jailhouse with the gallows. So if you were sentenced to death, you were sent here to be hung. Hangings back then in the 1800s were somewhat of a public event. Everybody wanted to come watch these men get hung for some reason. I still can't understand that. They would announce it in the paper this Saturday morning. 
prisoner to be hung at the county courthouse. People would pack up their families, pick up lunch, and come down and surround the jailhouse that was behind this building. By the year of 1867, there was 17 recorded hangings that happened here, but there was many more before that that were never actually recorded. And all of the bodies were buried around the jailhouse behind this courthouse. The jailhouse was torn down in the 1970s, and they paved over the whole area with a parking lot as if it never happened. So a lot of people still come here today for court for businesses, and they have no idea the dark history that used to happen behind that building. Now take a look at this house on the left here. This is Macintosh Castle. It's another castle. Did you know that? Now this was built in 1850 for a Scottish merchant named Donald Macintosh. He wanted to entice his family to move over here from Scotland, and he promised them a beautiful castle overlooking Lake Ontario. So he started construction, went bankrupt in the process, which is why you only see a, a small, small castle, and sadly he end, never ended up living in it. But the people who took it over, if you notice at the very top at the back there, they have a little green gla uh, glass tower there. They had that built specifically so the woman of the house could sit there, drink her tea in the morning, and watch those hangings happen across the street in the parking lot. Right from the comfort of her own home, I say. Front row seat. A lot of these big Victorian style homes in this area were always very hard to maintain over the years as personal residences. So they ended up, a lot of them ended up being uh, constructed into separate apartments. And then some of them were used as bed breakfasts. So this house on the left that we're passing by here is the Rosemount Inn. It's a very popular bed breakfast and spa. It's a beautiful building. And straight ahead of us to the right on the corner is the Secret Garden Inn. If anyone's uh, read that novel or heard of the Secret Garden, that was actually written about true hauntings that happened inside this house. Anyone staying there tonight? Uh -huh. Still a very, very haunted building here in the city. It stands 242 feet tall. It's actually our yeah. largest or tallest uh, historic building here in Kingston. It's an absolutely beautiful church. They do allow you to go inside as well to, to look at it if you're interested. <laughs> if you look ahead of us, you'll see this lovely pink house. It's actually now a private residence, but it was originally built to be, um, I can't think of the word, but to take in uh, newly widowed women. So often if you uh, lost your husband back then, you would also lose your home. So if you didn't have a family member to take, take you in and help you out, you would often be homeless. So somebody opened this, this house to take in those women and kind of give them a chance to, to rebuild their lives. But now someone lives in there, and it's a private residence. So this is Princess Street that we're turning on to. This is our main drag of downtown Kingston. It's where all the action is, all of our uh, restaurants, shopping, nightlife. <laughs> Back in the 1800s, this was called Store Street, very original, yeah. and the oldest store that actually still exists is called Jane Reed Furniture, we're going to pass it in a minute here, and it was uh, built in the mid-1800s and it's still in operation today. I think it's that time of day that everybody's delivering things and blocking traffic. But Kingston's always had such a lively downtown. 
you know, Queen students have a big part of that, but I've always been very proud of our downtown. We have a lot of amazing restaurants and, and shops. Kingston's actually has the most restaurants per capita than any other city in Canada. So for being such a small town, we do have a lot of different options for cuisine and, and different types of restaurants. Court is a very picturesque series of alleyways with a courtyard in the middle with two restaurants. And one of the restaurants is called Shea Piggy. Now Shea Piggy was uh, built or, or established in the 1970s uh, in an old abandoned horse stable. So Shea Piggy really set a trend for a lot of restaurant owners in Kingston to start opening these restaurants in these abandoned horse stables because there's so many of them downtown Kingston that just weren't being used. So often if you go into a lot of these restaurants down here, you'll see a lot of exposed limestone inside. That's because it was a horse stable before. So it's a neat little walk through uh, Brochelow Courts. There's three separate entrances and, and many different alleys that you can go down. So I always encourage people to go check it out. So I'll point to that as we drive by as well. Here's Wellington, if we take a left, that's where you'll find Martello Alley. And then just pass it on the right hand side is one of the entrances to Washington Court. 